However, let's get on to our location report on the making of Wild Geese 2. Wild Geese 1 dealt with the exploits of a bunch of eponymous mercenaries in Africa, led by the late Richard Burton. The sequel stars the likes of Edward Fox and Laurence Olivier, and much of the filming took place in Berlin. We caught up with the production in the West End of London, where among the other tourists wandering down Carnaby Street was the executive wing of the Wild Geese, Scott Glenn, star of The Right Stuff and The River. Uh, basically, it's the story of, uh, of, of a couple of mercenaries who get hired by a, a, a television network here in England to see if they can uh, spring Rudolph Hess from Spandau Prison, bring him over to England to uh, put him on television and increase the ratings of the network. Play a, uh, an, an American, born and raised in America, but of Lebanese parentage who since become a mercenary, makes his living essentially uh, killing strangers for money. Filming in any big city, be it London or Berlin, is always a headache, as producer Ewan Lloyd can testify. The logistics are always a problem, getting permits. But this is a piece of cake compared with Berlin, where you have to get the permi permission from the, from the three powers, France, Britain, and, uh, and America. The Russians are not about to give you any help. So that was a very tough one. So this is really quite easy here in London. One of the tricks used to make things easier is the placing of these undercover crew members to move on passers-by, in some cases inconspicuously, in others not so. This is simply one strategy used by director Peter Hunt to tackle his most pressing problem. There's people watching you all the time, looking straight into camera and things like that. But as you saw, we hid ourselves away and then put a camera down on the street, which is a sort of phony camera, so they could look into that one and we could get the shots on the other one. So. That's all. It's an old trick, isn't it? <laughs> I'm sure you've learned it by now. <laughs> this um, is the opening sequence. It's a, it's a, it establishes Scott Glenn uh, as our leading man. He's a, and we establish that he's a man who can take care of himself. We see him being pursued by someone who's after his blood. And in this toilet, the man who's pursuing him gives us a very exciting climax. Okay. If you'll pardon the expression, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> Having seen Scott Glenn vanish into a gent's toilet in Carnaby Street, we next find him through the magic of the movies in an underground toilet in Wembley Stadium, which proves that film crews don't always get to the most exotic locations. Although this one is more familiar to some members of the crew than to others. To the untrained eye, a stunt fight on set looks anything but convincing. Let me go further in, do another angle. But once Peter Hunt has cut his footage together and added sound effects, it'll appear suitably blood-curdling. A change of angle helps too. Now the cause of all this mayhem is Barbara Carrera, the London anchorwoman of a fictitious American television network and the lady charged with the task of nailing down the story. None of us really know anything about Rudolf Hess. The only thing we know is that he started out as the secretary of Hitler. We also know that he was his number two man. We also know that he took a solo flight from Germany into England when he was captured, but we do not know why. To this day, we don't know why. There are all these questions that has not been answered. If you can imagine Wormwood Scrubs with one prisoner in it, but protected by the firepower of four nations, the question must come to mind, why? I think he knows, I think the perfect title for my picture would be The Man Who Knew Too Much. <laughs> well, I think we all know that it really is impossible. If it was impossible for James Bond to get into Fort Knox successfully, uh, I, I think this mission is quite outrageous. If it is possible, the only possible way is the way we do it in the film which you shall have to pay your money to see. <laughs> Can you believe that? Springing Rudolf Hess from Spandau, ITV will do anything for ratings. Well, Wild Geese 2 will be shown later in the year with Laurence Olivier playing Hess.